Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good, happy, happy Saturday morning. Hope everybody is doing amazing. Um, so, who's up? <laughs> is there anybody up this morning or is everybody just still sleeping and resting? Since it is a holiday weekend, um, I know a lot of times people try to sleep in, right? Which is fine because you can catch me on the replay. But I want you to share this video. Um, <clears throat> if you can remember, recently I did a video about self-reflection, okay? Um, and a lot of my various different clients are going through the process of kind of beginning their, you know, their, um, understanding the self-love acts. <clears throat> They're not easy to understand because oftentimes loving self requires um, a different way to actually open your mind up, okay? So we, we know how to love others a lot of times. We understand loving children and loving our babies and loving our mates and all of that. Good morning, Ephraim. Loving our, our kids and loving our friends and loving our family, all of that is easy to do. Because, of course, we've been um, taught how to treat others a lot of times. So make sure you guys share this video because I want this to get out, okay? Because I'm teaching slowly but surely how to love self. How to understand that self-love is key to any other relationships you have. I'm talking about any relationship, okay? So, hey, good morning, Delise. So make sure that you get your pen and pad my baby girl bought me this this journal so i have mine here too and it says mom someone who sees the best in her kids even when they drive her crazy so she just got me this love it going to use it this morning okay so i'm just going to give you a real quick recap of what i talked about the other day which was about self-reflection okay so get your pen and pads out i want you to write down self-reflection what is self-reflection exactly? What does it mean to self-reflect? It, it is a way to love yourself. It is essential to do often, if not daily. We need to make sure that we understand that self-reflection is key to really beginning to love yourself. Why is self-reflection important? Self-reflection is imperative that you do because if you don't, you begin to look down your nose at other people. You begin to get very judgmental. You begin to get kind of bitey and nagging, naggy, and you also have a tendency to become really, um, I would say, uh, very hard to stomach, <laughs> just to put it lightly, okay? So self-reflection means that you're stepping outside of yourself and you're looking at you, okay? Stepping outside of yourself and looking at you, which means I'm looking at my actions. I'm also filtering through my thoughts. I'm trying to determine if what I think and how I think is healthy. I'm also trying to see how I really spend my time. All of these things is a part of self-reflection. We should be doing this often if not daily i do mine daily i have to because i coach but i strongly suggest you make a practice of this um frequently frequently if not daily okay so first and foremost i wanted to bring up self-reflection because self-reflection you first have to practice in order to become self-accountable okay so when we are self-reflective we're taking our time to really deep dive into our soul and look and see what it what are the things that we do that we can improve so last time i used my example of being late all the time okay so that was a small example but it's very big because all examples don't have to be huge where i'm always you know being mean to people or i'm always this i'm always that it could be just something we tend to do that is irritating, 
not just to yourself, but it's irritating to others, okay? And it doesn't have to be that the actions we're doing are malicious. Sometimes it's just something we do because we're not being mindful of our own actions. And then when we're not in, in the space of looking at self, we have a tendency to judge others. So when you find yourself often, this is only for you to pay attention to so that you know, oh, I need to get myself a uh, reflection in check. When you are always looking at others in a very judgmental space. And what I mean by that is you're constantly saying what someone else is doing wrong. You're constantly complaining. You're constantly nagging. You're constantly doing things like, th like that. And, you know, um, you really are aggravated a lot of times because you don't really know, well, how am I supposed to get out of my funk? Well, so stop what you're doing and start looking and looking at self and say, okay, when I look at me, I do see that I do some things that maybe I shouldn't be doing. And like I said, it doesn't have to be anything major. And sometimes we need to just take small baby steps to really learn certain things that maybe even other people have said that came from an honest space that we do that we need to work on. It is fine. It is fine. It's okay for somebody to say, girl, why do you do that all the time? You're not being mindful of what you're doing. And you're like, I don't do that. Because of course, a lot of times we don't want to admit nor do we want to acknowledge flaws in self. So self-reflection is the greatest self-care act because it is making us now be accountable for our actions. So now the reason why I wanted to just give you a little recap of why self-reflection is so important because self-reflection helps your self-accountability to be easier, okay? So how do we become self-accountable? Well, we first have to have to hear, have to listen. That's number one. We have to listen. And what I mean by listen is we have to listen to what other people say about our actions. And then once we listen and hear them, whether we acknowledge it or not, we have to then sift through what they said. The reason why it's important to hear someone else until you develop your own self-reflection, sometimes you got to hear what someone else is saying. And now back to what I also talked about before, people that are people pleasers. This applies to you as well. There are people that will be in your life that may actually be honest with you and maybe telling you something that is true. If that is the case, you know it. So let's not be in denial. Well, I'm a people pleaser, so I don't have to listen to no critique. No, that's not what I said. What I said is the honest critique that comes to you and people tell you certain things and you know it to be true, but you don't want to face it. That is something that you need to work on. And so in that understanding, hey, Lindsay, yes, it's all the perceptive. perceptive. So when someone's telling you something, you have to listen and then you have to go back to self-reflection. Like I said, this is a part of self-loving, self-loving is self-reflection. So you have to then go back to understanding you. See? So now when you go back to looking at self and paying attention to self, is it true what they're saying? Now here's the fun, funny part about it. We have to admit it if it's true. That's a part of self-accountability, okay? So self-accountability comes from listening and hearing the real truth that we don't want to acknowledge and then owning it as being the truth and then becoming accountable of that truth. So now what do we do when someone tells us the truth that we know is true? Do we dismiss it? Hello, do we dismiss it? Yes, I dismissed it a lot. <laughs> when my girls and stuff would tell me, you're always late. When I was when I was late to the Lionel Richie concert, my best friend was livid. How are, how are we late to seeing Lionel Richie at a free concert? How? Well, I was rushing and all this other stuff. 
unacceptable, right? So I use that as an example of how do I improve my actions of continuing to be late? What do I need to do to fix this? Because obviously my habitual pattern to continue to be late and drag out time like I don't have to be on time is a problem. So now what is in place for me to now be accountable? I don't have, I didn't have a coach at the time to be uh, in my ear telling me, were you accountable for your time today? Did you show up on time? Were you on time to work? Were you doing this on time? Were you being punctual? I didn't have that. So I had to learn how to manage and be more mindful of my time. And also acknowledging that other people's time is held up because of me. Prime example, that's a part of self accountability. Okay, so now in my admission that what was said was true, okay, so what she told me was accurate because I in myself had to deep dive into my spirit and say, is this truly a truth that she's speaking to me? And I had to be like, yes, okay, so you know for a fact you're always late and you continue to be late, that is a problem within you. What are you going to do to change it? Now I have to come up with a resolution. Self-accountability helps us to develop better patterns. Self-accountability helps us to develop better results. So if I want a better result, I have to do what? Acknowledge the truth, admit it, and then come up with a plan to change it. For the better, of course. So, to become self-accountable, we have to first own our stuff. And for those of you that don't want to hear what I'm saying, you got to own your shit. How about that? Do you hear that? <laughs> you got to own your shit. So, if we're going to own our stuff and own our shit, we have to first sit down and be honest with self. When someone tells you a truth, now here's the thing. Not everybody are we going to receive critique well from. And let me give you those people that we tend to not hear and listen to. People that are extremely close to us. That we see often. We have a hard time hearing the truth from them. Two, people we don't respect. We have a hard time hearing the truth from. Okay? Um... People that we see as controlling, we have a hard time hearing the truth from. However, it is vitally important that you sit back and you acknowledge, hey, Hassan, that you acknowledge, wait a minute, what they said was honest. They weren't saying it to be malicious. They were saying, man, mom, you do do this. Even your kids, you have a hard time hearing critique from your children. Your children may tell you, mom, you do this all the time. You're like, no, I don't. Well, that's denial. <laughs> okay. You're not being, you're not being accountable when you're in denial. So you, this is a part, again, we have to go through the steps. So self-reflection has to require us to look at when someone says a truth to us, do we acknowledge the truth or do we deny the truth? And in our denial, are we really denying it because we don't want to admit it or we're denying it because it's not true? So, again, we go back to becoming self-accountable requires us to own our shit and own our stuff, okay? So when someone tells you a truth in your soul, what do you normally do? Do you dismiss it or do you sit back and be like, man, that is right. I do do that but I don't know how to fix it. Okay, what are you doing? Here's the self-accountability piece. What are you doing to change the results? What you do to change the results shows you are practicing self-accountability. So prime example, I will use a, a current example for you to understand how I shifted and changed my punctuality by starting to be more mindful of, of my time. So for instance, I have this training I have going on and in my training, I have to be there at nine o'clock. 
Now, because I don't have to leave my home for the meeting, I can stretch my time out, right? I can be like, well, I even gotta get up to like eight. <laughs> and then I can, you know, take my shower, wash my hair, do this and do that. And then I'll be there. Okay, but you're gonna be there at 8.59 trying to rush to get on on time. So why not think about your time management, Carla Nicole, and get up early. Try getting up at seven. That way you giving, you're giving yourself a leeway of time to kind of relax and lean back and take your time to get to the training, right? So now self-reflection is what am I going to do different so I'm not rushing to get there? <laughs> what am I going to do different? So I had to set the, so I had to set the clock. Now I also set my clocks 15 minutes ahead of time in my home. It's not by accident. I do it on purpose. Okay. Again, this is to help me to help myself be self accountable. So now I set my clocks up 15 minutes. So even when I set my clock for seven, it's actually 645. So even if I hit the snooze button and it says seven o'clock, I'm sorry. And if I hit the snooze button and it says seven o'clock, it is not seven o'clock. It's only 645. This is one of the things that I use to make sure I'm on time and punctual. Now, there's also breaks and lunches that I have to be punctual with, right? I know I got a 15 minute break. I might want to wash clothes or I might want to go, you know, and outside real quick and do this and do that. I give myself time, but I'm more punctual because I'm mindful of knowing when I'm, I give myself leeway and I also give myself um, clear signs of understanding. You have to be paying attention to your watch because this is not a normal time that you would be doing something like this. So be mindful that your steps to becoming self accountable requires me to take the time out and say, hold on. Okay. I only have 15 minutes, so I shouldn't be going and doing nothing. That's going to be 30 minutes long to take me to be done. So if it's something small, short, cute, whatever, you want to run up and do this, run up and do that. That's fine. Then go ahead and do that. you got enough time for that. But be honest with self and say, I'm not going to take only 15 minutes to make a whole meal or to, to meal prep. So meal prep the next day. I mean the prior day and then cook your meal and put it in the crock pot or whatever. These are things and steps I had to do to learn to become more punctual, more on time. Now, does it work? Yes. Am I ever late? Very seldom. Very seldom. I am now more punctual than I ever been in my whole life now. Have I been late to something? Yes, but I own my shit. If I see I'm going to be late, I call. I say something. I make myself own the shit. You're going to be late because of whatever you didn't do right. So I'm going to own that. Okay. So I'm using this as an example. So you guys understand self accountability is key to improving your life. Okay. So I make steps to make sure that if I am running behind or late, or I'm seeing that I'm cutting it close, I make myself contact the person or the people so that I'm not late or so that I'm owning the fact I probably won't make it at that time. Is there something that I need to do? Can, can we, you know, can I call in? Can we do something to make sure that I'm not hindering what I'm needing to, you know, be trained on or whatever? What can I do? Because I'm running behind, but I very seldom have this late stuff going on and it comes from owning my shit. That makes sense. So, it's imperative that we are mindful that self-accountability is a self-love act to yourself. We have to understand that it's not, and I say this all the time, loving yourself is not about grooming. It's not about buying yourself something. It's not about activities that are not improving you, your soul, yourself. So, all of those things, getting your nails done, getting your hair done, going and buying Jordans, going to the games, all of that stuff, going to the sports bars, having fun, that has nothing to do with loving you. Self-care acts shows you how to love you. When you improve loving yourself, you improve loving others. It doesn't matter what relationship you are in 
be it parenting, be it that you're a child of an elder parent, be it that you're an aunt, an uncle, a cousin, a family member, a friend, a co-worker, whatever. What, or sorry, I'm sorry, how you love yourself will show you in those relationships because of how you are treated, because of the way you treat you and what you, and what you are accepting of. So what I strongly suggest, and this is, this is something for those of you that want coached on this, please inbox me. I'm just a call away or inbox away. If you guys want coached on becoming self accountable, I first want you to go, I'm going to share the self love care acts in this, in this, um, live. So you have the link to do that. But outside of that, if you want a coach to help guide you into loving self more in a better order, loving self and being more accountable, you need sometimes somebody to help guide you into bettering how you love self. We're not taught this in school. We're not taught how to love self. We're not. And it is what it is. So in our adult years, in order for us to learn how to parent our adult kids, we have to go back to school and learn how to love us. Because let me tell you something, once you have an adult child, it's a different type of parenting. You can't just tell them to do what you want them to do. You now have to be a suggestive parent. Changes everything. So now you have to go back to, well, how am I loving myself? And if my love of self isn't really where it needs to be, I'm going to misguide my child because I'm going to feel like I can still parent my child the way I did when she or he was younger. And that's not going to work. You're going to have a lot of, you're going to have a lot of, um, you know, back and forth arguments. And sometimes it could be even brawls and fights because there's not an understanding or a clear understanding of how you're loving you. So again, self-love requires for you to sit down and look at self. Listen to what other people have said that is honest. That is that has truth to it. And you know it's true because you in your spirit and soul know you do it. <laughs> okay? Now, once you know it, the next conquest you should be doing is figuring out how to fix that, resolve it. How do I fix what I'm continuing to pattern my life against? Why do I keep doing the same thing over and over and then assume I'm going to get another result? I'm going to keep getting the results I'm getting, okay? So be honest with self and understand, wait a minute, I do tend to do these things. I do do them. So let me not be in denial because denial is immature. When we're not owning our shit, we're being immature. We're not owning it because we don't want to face it. When you don't want to face something, a lot of times you fear that you have to do something. That's being lazy. When you have to start doing something to change something, it requires work. It requires self sitting your, sitting your ass down and doing the work. In order to do the work, you have to say, hold on, what do I need to do and how do I need to do it? And then am I willing to do it? Because, see, we can say we got to do this, got to do that. Oh, you know, I got to do this and do nothing. <laughs> and so now you're, you're just talking and you're not still not getting anything done and accomplished. So is there any questions about self-accountability? Because I really don't want to just rush through this. I want to take my time with this. I want to give you guys time to really think about what I said. You have to hear what other people say about what you do that maybe needs improved. Now, also, this is another thing that you need to pay attention to. I did say you need to hear, but you also need to pay attention. You need to pay attention to people's body language. When you walk in a room, are, are, are people um, excited to see you or are people irritated by your presence? And I, I'm not even just talking about at work or anything like that. I'm talking about when you come home. Are the children deflating because you're home? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. As soon as you walk in the door, oh, here, here she is. Oh, what's she going to make me do? What's she going to judge me on today? 
How's she going to treat me now? Am I in trouble about this? Am I in trouble about that? Are your kids deflating every time you show up? Uh-oh. Is your love interest often aggravated by your presence? Hmm? I'm just asking. Because we have to also pay attention to people's reaction to our presence. This is a part of self-love. The reason it's important that you know this is because you have to be aware in order to change the way people respond to your presence. Is your response from other people inviting? Do you make people excited you're in, in, in the room? Are they eager to see you or not? Are they more aggravated with your presence? This is something you need to also write down. I'm not often received well when I rock, walk in a room. Okay, so that means that there is obviously something going on when you show up that's negative or that you're judgmental or you're real naggy. To, to your family members or your love affairs, it, within your love affairs or when, wherever you are. This is a part of self-accountability because now you know that. You know, you see it. When you come in the door, you know they're aggravated by your presence. Why? Are you willing to change that rapport? Are you willing to come in the home and change it and make it more inviting when your presence shows up? Why is it your children are deflating every time they see you? Why is your love your love affair looking like, uh, your man is like, oh, here she is, God. Why? You know why. But you don't want to admit in your soul or in yourself that you <laughs> come in nagging, bitching, complaining, everything is wrong. What did you do here? Why didn't this get done? Da -da 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 and then you wonder why nobody's excited to see you. That's something that you need to look at. This is a part of loving self. Again, that comes down to, okay, I'm aware that this is the rapport when I walk in the room. I want to change that. It's going to take work. You willing to do it or are you lazy with it? See, I, I, don't, I don't say stuff for nothing. I'm telling you because I know what's going on in households. Because I have co a coach. I know. I know that there's lovers that don't sleep together. They sleep back to back or one's on the couch and one's in the bed. That, that, that's happening right now as we speak. I'm sure somebody's getting up off the couch to go to get to work. They're not in a, lo they're not in a loving space with their mate, with their lover. Why? Because they don't want to change or evolve or look at self it's got here because i'm not owning that my imperfections needs to be tweaked and fixed and improved and we can we can change it but you got to be willing to do it i'm just saying <laughs> it, it takes it takes really it takes the mind to be to be honest with self we have to be honest with ourselves okay Every time I come into home, all I do is bitch. Every time I come to my, we can say as an example, every time I talk to my adult child, I'm starting to criticize everything they do wrong as a parent. Because, you know, they're a parent now, but they don't know what they're doing. Really? <laughs> and you did everything right. But their parent don't know what they're doing. Well, how did they learn how to be a parent? Uh-oh. <laughs> Self-accountability. Maybe there's some things that you didn't teach your child that perhaps you fell short in and now your child is is really your extension and vision of what you were to them if you were parenting to perfection then of course your child most likely will parent well because they had an example uh, that you showed them so again self-accountability means ooh, i might have I might have fell short there. Let me let me figure out a, a way to help improve my rapport with my child 
so that I can help guide my child to better parenting by me being the example of parenting her better as an adult. Uh oh, now that takes work. <laughs> are you willing to do the work or you want to be lazy with it? I'm just saying, I'm trying to give y'all jewels this morning. Jewels this morning. You ready? You ready to really look at yourself and then make yourself accountable? Write this down. Is my presence welcomed in my home, in my love affairs, with my children, with my elder parents? with my coworkers and or my you know business people that I work with am I welcomed or am I more ran from do people deplete when I show up I have to become more aware I need to pay attention because in order for me to get better with self I got to get the understanding of what I bring when I when I show up. Are people excited about me or not? And if they're not, what do I need to do to change this? If I have nagging ways, what do I need to do to change it? If I'm often criti critical and criticizing everybody in my presence, what can I do to change that? You can start self-reflection first. Start looking at you. Start forgiving yourself of things you didn't do right. And then you can begin to be more forgiving of others. Again, it comes down to self-reflection and then self-reflection. You piggyback from that and then you go on and start being self-accountable. Owning your shit. Make sure y'all share this video, okay? Y'all need a coach. You need some help with this? Inbox me. I'm going to inbox away. Inbox me. Hey, coach. I'm ready to do the work. What I need to do? Like, hey, you really ready? Cause I'm gonna make you. I'm gonna. I'm gonna make you own your stuff. <laughs> I'm, going, I'm not. I'm not a softy when it comes to that. Cause what? You know why? I'm not a softy with myself. If I notice that my daughter and I have something going on, I'm gonna address it. What do I need to do to fix it? But I'm not gonna address it with her. I'm gonna address it with me first. Okay, maybe I'm not doing something right. Even my son, and my son is thirteen. Look, I got a teenager up in here, <laughs> a young man. I got to be like, ooh, okay. Um, maybe I'm not clear. When I tell you to do your, your room and keep it clean, and you're not, maybe I'm not, something's going awry here. So my, I, need to, I need to change something. I'm not making him accountable enough. Right? So if I'm doing that, I'm constantly aware of my surroundings. I pay attention to my kids when they see me in the morning. How do they look at me? Are they like, oh God, here's mom. What's she about to do now? What's she about to say now? Hey mom. And all this like, what is that? No, that's not, a, a, hold on. But when I get the, hey mom. Hey, I love you. Da, 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 da. I get gifts from daughters and stuff. Okay, then I'm doing something. Okay, okay, so. My, my resonance with my child is in good standing. Can that change? Yes, in a blink of an eye, it can change. It can change uh, on, any, on any front, in any relationship, even in your love affairs, it can change. So what do we need to do? We need to always look at self and then be aware, pay attention, listen, and then own your shit. Okay, I know I do this. I know I've, I've heard this over and over and over again in my life from different people. And I continue to do it. So what do I need to do to change it? Well, I haven't even been on a conquest for that. I haven't thought about how to change my ways and change to being, to being a better person. Well, but you keep getting the same results. You keep getting in the same relationships with the same person with a different name. You continue to have children that don't want to be bothered with their mama or father. You continue to get this critique and you don't know why because you're not sitting down and owning your stuff. And then you wonder why the resonance isn't where it needs to be. Okay? So share this. Like I said, share the video. 
Think about what I said. Write it down. Don't just think in your head because we don't have a tendency to fix shit. We don't want to write that. We, we don't want to fix stuff. We just want to look at stuff. Write down your, your flaws, your imperfections, something you hear a lot. Write it down. Improve it. You think I don't still write stuff down? I write stuff down all the time. Yes, I coach people. Yes, I help people. But I got to first help me. So what kind of coach would I be if I can't admit to my own stuff for y'all to get it? <laughs> Just saying. What kind of coach would I be? You shouldn't listen to me. I wouldn't even come on here. I wouldn't even claim to be a coach. If I, if I wasn't doing my own inner work, doing my own self-care acts, one at a time, daily, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't come out here and, and coach no one. Because that is, that is being dishonest and I don't live my, my life that way. But again, that comes down to self-accountability. I make myself accountable. I can't go out here, my house is a shambles. My kids can't respect me. My man don't want to make love to me. And I'm trying to guide somebody. I'm, I'm, what does that look like? <laughs> that's, that's totally unacceptable in my eyes. So it's very important. You have to write down what you hear. Pay attention. Ask the questions I told you to ask. If you just joined, make sure to watch the replay. It's vitally important to know how to love you. All right? I'm out of here, guys. It's Carla Nicole. I'm signing off. Best kept.